Hi, this is Debbie Dashinger, Dare to Dream podcast, and I am going to welcome a guest back to my show. So if you have not seen her first interview on the show, highly recommended that you do a search, whether you're on a podcast site or a radio station or YouTube, youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger, and check out Vita Kukulhoff because the first interview is worth everything. And we're not going to backtrack. We're going to be taking off from there. So I want to give you a little bit of something, something about her. And before I launch into that, I want to thank the sponsors for this show, Dr. Dane Keir and Access Consciousness. They do beautiful energy work out into the world. You can actually become a facilitator of Access Consciousness. Go to accessconsciousness.com or attend one of their online classes, get their products, their books, uh, just check out their video series. It's all amazing. Dr. Dane, D-A-I-N here, H-E-E-R.com and accessconsciousness.com. Great friends to this show. So yes, Vita Kukulhoff is back. I was just telling her before we began, it's like Christmas. Nice Jewish girl that I am. <laughs> it's like Christmas to me to have her back. And she is a coach. She's a conscious designer offering ET channeling internationally in the Netherlands. She pretty much was my inaugural interview about extraterrestrials, extra dimensionals, and that being channeled. So I really honor her for helping me break the ice within myself. And I think with you, my audience, because you have followed me so beautifully and graciously through this exploration, I am definitely on. You've seen her interviewed several times on Gaia TV with another friend to the show, Ruben Langdon, who hosts Interview with Extra Dimensionals, as well as having been on many radio and podcast shows. It is Vitika's passion to share the love and high frequency messages from our multidimensional family. They come to us because of our invitation to assist humanity by using their wisdom and rebalancing our physical system. She facilitates new doorways to further explore and experience our own multidimensional nature and personal connection to the stars. Vidika is known as an international ET channel for Arjun of the Yael. And she is also an artist, painter, illustrator, and life coach. You can see some of her works in the last interview on youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. And if you'd like to know more about her, go to her website at designforawareness.com. And that's the number four. So it's design number four, awareness.com. And I welcome the beautiful Vitaka Kulhoff back to Dare to Dream. Ah, it's so great to have you. Oh, thank you, Debbie, for these wonderful words and your warm, warm welcome. It's my honor and pleasure to be here with you again. Yeah, I thank this show, actually, just the entity that is Dare to Dream, because mm -hmm. I get to, you know, even between shows, we've stayed in touch. I get to find out more about your journey and who you're being out in the world. And that makes me mm, very, very happy. So when we last spoke, it was six months ago. I know major changes. And so I'd love you to just let us know what have you been up to besides moving, besides writing a book? <laughs> what are some of the many things you've been doing these last six months? All right. Well, thank you for that question. Um, well, I moved houses in those last six months. Um, so I'm back in Amsterdam. I used to be in Amsterdam before for about 10 years. And um, I moved out of the city for a year where I really enjoyed the forests. Um, and then came this really interesting year <laughs> and I suddenly so missed my old neighborhood and my friend circles and my social connections and so I moved back uh, I missed the buzz so to speak um, and it's wonderful because really only weeks after I returned in the city uh, new projects started flowing and bubbling and I just I just you know knew that it made sense even though a lot of things in my rational mind said, no, it doesn't make sense. You, you should be, quote unquote, out of the city, especially right now. It's better to be, you know, not in a busy place. And then I thought, you know, I've never actually been, I, I never consciously felt I was negatively influenced by the fact that this is the city. Also, it's not as large as, say, uh, London or Paris or something. Amsterdam is way smaller. You can walk through it. So it has a very cute, characteristic old center. Um, and I'm in that old part. So, you know, it's really, 
<clears throat> when I uh, ride my bicycle or when I have a walk here uh, by the canals and I see the old crooked houses leaning over and little trees growing in the, in the how do you call that, the part that, that brings the rain from the roof down. Oh, the <laughs> yes, the gutter, better. thank you. Um, there's like, cause sometimes there's flowers growing up there and mm -hmm. I'm just so in love with that old architecture and the little canals and the sunlight, how it, you know, falls through the, those old streets and the, the cobblestones. It's just, it makes me feel at home. So right now I feel I need to be here and, and you know, um, uh, coincidence wants to to then bring me as well new projects with people that I am now newly meeting here that I didn't see before so I think I went through a bit of um, personal transformation as well by leaving and then coming back like anew and I realized um, this is just a personal confession uh, confession in a way um, that um, when it comes to the ET channeling work I've been focusing very much on the international scene because it's um, more developed, so to speak. <laughs> um, <clears throat> as you know, America has a lot of information on this topic. In Europe, we're still a little shy, just generalizing here. And so for me, working internationally was actually more effortless than focusing on my own country. And so you could say that in a way, when I was in Amsterdam before, I was kind of, yeah, how am I going to say this? Um, living undercover <laughs> when it comes to my actual work. So while I was out of the city in that year that I lived out of the city, um, that changed. And all of a sudden I realized, you know, uh, I do work in Dutch with private clients that are Dutch. Uh, and that means I channel in Dutch as well, obviously, that's my first language. Um, and something changed. I just felt suddenly, you know, that last little bit of hiding energy in me as a person, mm -hmm. I want to let go of it. So I guess that the 2020 energy for me, I mean, we all went through our own personal processes in one way or another. I mean, I can't think of one person that didn't have a personal process as a result of this year. And for me, it was, if I wanna see everything out and on the table in the world, which is my reflection uh, of, you know, um, which is a reflection, the, the world is a mirror. This is what, what, what the Yael, what the ETs keep reminding us of. Our reality is a co-created reality mirror, a mirror reality. So if I want to see everything to be out there and on the table and in the light, like no fears, no hiding, no lying, no betrayal. If, I, if that's what I am ambition to see in the world out there for other people, even mm -hmm. though they're also part of the, you know, the, the stage as we paint it for each other and ourselves, um, then I really felt this really strong urge. I'm like, then I can't stay in hiding either. There's no way I can balance these two ideas, like being a little bit undercover about what I are most, am most passionate about in my life, in my own country, and then being really open <laughs> about it in the international platform. So um, that's definitely changing. And I've, I met a couple this summer, um, in the Netherlands that are Dutch and they're a married couple and they have a really beautiful Dutch platform and we're going to co-create, we're going to do projects together. Um, so it's going to be out there more and in Dutch. Guys, girls, whoever's listening, or June in Dutch, it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be there and, and there's going to be a lot more of that. So um, it's interesting to get my tiny little country on board of this journey. Uh, there's a lot of curiosity recently about ET contact and disclosure. Mm -hmm. um, I've been invited by television even already four times, but I've always said no. <laughs> That's a little bit too big of a jump for me so far. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's clear that I'm on the map and people know where to find me. And they want to hear what I have to share about my journey. They want to hear Arjun. So I'm like, okay, times are changing. This summer, the Pentagon announced to the world that they acknowledge the UFO sightings that have been recorded by the Navy, I believe, in America, um, which videos were out there already in 2017. Uh, but it's wonderful when, um, you know, 
that kind of stuff gets confirmed. And um, I feel very strongly that the idea of disclosure is um, speeding up. We are changing gears and or Corona may, might seem a very um, distracting factor. Um, I feel that behind the scenes, things are changing tremendously. And I felt within my own life, I want to, um, you know, um, nourish that same type of energy. Uh, all the getting out of the closet stuff and, uh, <laughs> you know, facing your fears. And uh, so that's what I've been up to the past six months. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's such a good share. And there was a lot in there. <clears throat> I just want to address the one item that is so funny, ironic, perverse, that for all of us, what we teach, there's always that hidden shadow piece of us. Mm -hmm. I, I as well, 100%, you know, I'm known as a visibility expert because I teach people through their books, through their interviews to be visible, right? And to ride that wave. And recently I hired a business manager and she asked me, Debbie, are you doing videos on social media? I'm like, no. And she said, well, I would really like it if you'll just do a one minute video, you teach all this stuff, do a one minute video about writing a book and then invite people to join your book writing thing. And so what happened is every day on my to-do list, it showed up and I did everything else but that. And I was yeah, it's so beautiful, right? Of course. So I was coaching a client. I was working with a, a long-term client. And for whatever the conversation was, that popped. And I made a joke saying, isn't this so funny that this is showing up for me? And I am, and the more it's on my to-do list, the more I'm resisting it. And this here's the game changer. My client said to me, did you know that money is hidden? in the things <laughs> in your business you don't want to do. So money is hidden what, wherever you resist in your business going. And I'm like, oh, that's so good. <laughs> so that day I did a video. I'm like, whatever, I teach this. This should be indigenous to me. And I'm going to, I know I can't push myself to once a day because then I know I'll be like a child digging mm -hmm. my heels. But if I say once a week, you can do once a week. So I really relate to that. I need to be more visible. It is our time, isn't it? Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. ever there was a time to be visible and help guide people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, true. Absolutely. Cannot play. No more, no more playing small. <laughs> so I'm very, very proud of you for stepping up like that. And, um, and I can't wait to hear when you do say yes to television. I know that. Uh, <laughs> I don't even have a television. That's the thing. Um, I I would do podcasts like and and this like people who who started their own YouTube channels. Um, I haven't had a television for fifteen years. Like I check on the internet if I need to know something that's from the quote unquote news. Um, but other than that, I'm really happy that there is not a television in my life, and that makes it extra awkward when a television program asks me. Um, but I am very, very willing to help them do their research and, um, for instance, send them on to another person that I know is super interesting and hasn't been out there uh, yet, uh, or mention some names and links and websites to the people who are making the programs. So I do, from the back side, you know, um, drop some info that they may be able to use. And they're always very grateful to receive that because they're very often new to this entire world and the idea of channeling. And obviously there's a broad spectrum of facilitators in any country doing all kinds of stuff cosmically related. And yeah, so to be you know, new in that field and not know where to even start looking uh, is very confusing. So the, the um, scouts basically that call me <laughs> are usually people that have been hired to find people for a specific program, but they're usually also quite new to the topic. So um, I've been definitely assisting these people and I've still got all their names in my phone. <laughs> so it's not like uh, it was a hard cut, no. Um, there's one program that's still kind of in the back of my mind that I might consider. Um, but for me, it's really, really important that there is some quality to the program itself as well. Like, um, I'm not gonna be in some show that is really aiming for um, ridiculizing um, 
ridiculing the um, whole idea of ET contact or putting you in a, um, a box with three other people that are, you know, doing I don't know what. <laughs> so that that little fragment where it's you saying a few things uh, gets entirely pulled out of context. So this is the thing with television, you know, sometimes they, they run away with it. And, and I'm really, you know, cautious with that. I've seen it happen to other people. Um, and of course, probably this is a fear based belief. <laughs> and I'm <laughs> aware of it as I'm speaking it. But I must say my immediate excitement does go out to people who start podcasts and have their own shows like you do. Um, because very often the focus and the quality of those is much higher and people who do wish to put in the energy and research to dig a little deeper and go for that quality experience, they're more likely to find it um, in shows such as yours than on television. We, I think most of the people who are listening to this know that or they wouldn't be here. So um, yeah, that's why this feels really good and television is always something I need to sleep a night on or at least <laughs> yeah. think a little longer about yeah I love that yeah to be cautious about your visibility and where that pops up so that it's mm -hmm. serving it's serving basically yeah. I mean you wouldn't be given this gift if it wasn't a, an amazing service you have chosen in this lifetime another place where you're of service is starseed.hub and I want to oh. get caught up that's where people who are interested in ET contact can meet how is starseed hub Dot com going has anything cool happened because of connections there um i'm not super on top of it uh, a dear friend of mine with whom i co-created this platform from oslo norway he is more of the moderator and um he hears more about people who are on starseedhub.com and there's also a facebook group with the same name so people can actually chat and interact directly there as well uh, but I do hear once in a while some stories through him or from a person who was on the hub <laughs> sending me a little email or a little message on Facebook like, oh, I found people in my neighborhood and we started a little group uh, and now we're doing meditations together or <clears throat> so-called CE5 meditations, which is going outside with a little group and meditating in order to invite UFOs in the sky and sometimes with success. This is a modality that has been um, quote unquote invented by Stephen Greer. You've probably mm -hmm. heard his name before. And CE5 is really swiping the world and a lot of people are, um, more and more people are uh, jumping on board of that train and um, co-creating these wonderful and sometimes very miraculous experiences together. So I get some feedback now and then, but it's not like something I'm constantly focusing on to see what, what, what kind of magic is happening <laughs> all the time. But I'm happy it exists. It's a wonderful platform for definitely for star seeds that feel a little lonely and isolated to find each other in their own uh, neighborhood and have a cup of tea together. For mm. instance. And what about dolphins? What is your connection to dolphins? Oh, that's a nice question. <laughs> Thanks. Um, <clears throat> the first time, um, this is going to sound weird, but well, what doesn't, right, in my job. <laughs> um, when I was six years old, for the first time, I had a very, very strong dream where I was in the body of another being. Like, I don't know how else to say it. Mm -hmm. And it was a dolphin. So even before I had a conscious obsession with these particular uh, mammals, um, I had a dream where I was one and I got to experience what it's like to make those leaps out of the water and back into it. And it was amazing. And I woke up and from one day to the next, literally, I was obsessed with dolphins. So um, my mom definitely uh, got that message. <laughs> so I was like, dolphins this, dolphins that. And she took me to one of those places where you can see dolphins. Um, you know, like an organized place. They're in an aquarium kind of thing. Uh, that's not something like I was six. It's not something right now that I would promote going to. But I'm still happy that I had the, that experience as a child. Um, because it, it kind of solidified my dream for me. And um, it made me realize there was really something super important between them and me, although I couldn't really figure out what that was. But this has always stayed with me as a knowingness. Uh, and I guess it's with a lot of people as a knowingness that they like dolphins for some unexplainable reason. Maybe because they look so happy or whatever, you know, like whatever. Um, it's like they're always smiling. They have these like funny sounds. <laughs> they really do look people up. They love to interact uh, with us. Um, 
And then um, 2012, uh, coincidentally, was the first year where I thought, you know what? If there's any crazy childhood dreams still hiding in me, I think I should live it. <laughs> and that's when I booked a trip to uh, Egypt and um, for a whole week on a boat to swim with dolphins. Um, and I became friends, long story short, I became friends with the owner of the boat, who's a woman uh, from Germany. And uh, after visiting her twice as a participant of such trips, um, I noticed I missed a particular type of quality in the, um, the way this was being facilitated by the organizers. Um, and I spoke to her and I said, you know, my my dream for this would be to actually bring in the et elements and to give you know like channeling meditation yoga all of that encapsulated in this one week on the red sea visiting the dolphins and to see what happens if we <clears throat> cross combine that and then i started organizing these trips myself and it was amazing but of course this year <laughs> we couldn't do it it got canceled, no planes were flying. Um, hopefully 2021, we can do it again, um, but we will have to wait and see. Uh, no insistence on the outcome, right? <laughs> so um, we'll see, but <clears throat> the first time I had a physical encounter in the wild with dolphins was truly very different and much more profound than the experience I had as a child. Even though when I was six and we went to the um, aquarium, it was really, beautiful for me as a child. As an adult going there in 2012 for the first time, I had the most amazing downloads and dreams as a result of interacting with them. And you can truly telepathically connect with them while in the water. You may get you know, a sentence or just a knowingness um, in your being. And, and I know a lot of people who've had encounters with dolphins who've had these type of experiences as well. So. And it's, it's different because it's on their uh, watch. You know, they decide how close they come to you, if they come at all, uh, to what degree do they want to interact. And you flow with them in their world. You're a guest in their world. You're not pushing your presence on them. That's why I don't actually like the idea of dolphins in captivity. They're also way too smart and intelligent to be kept in such small um, places. Um, it's really, really challenging for them. Um, but anyway, to see them in the wild, it's, it's extraordinary. And obviously you have to be very respectful. People have this image in their head that you can just go around and pet them like, <laughs> like it's an animal in the zoo or something. And you can't even pet all the animals in the zoo, <laughs> but <laughs> they have this picture in their head, you know, like flipper. And wild dolphins are not like that. Uh, we even were asked by the owner of the boat that I have this um, co-creation uh, with. Um, you had to sign um, a form at the beginning of the adventure that um, you would not touch the dolphins. You, had, you promise it. You do not touch the dolphins. It's like a rule. Um, and I love that. I mean, we're in a nature area. Um, you are to respect the corals, the reef, mm -hmm. the dolphins and everything that lives in there. Uh, you're the guest, you know, so you behave. You don't just go touching people who, well, maybe <laughs> who you visit <laughs> in normal life. I don't know. <laughs> Bad example. <laughs> so anyway, with the dolphins, you respect nature. And, and that's one of the, um, yeah, that's really why I wanted to co-create uh, like this type of adventures with that particular organization as well. So, um, yeah. But it's always been a miraculous and uh, very magical aspect in the whole. You can invite them even if you have never been with them in the wild. If you haven't had that opportunity, you can invite them in meditation. They hear you. They really do. You can communicate with dolphins. And it doesn't matter whether you're even close to a sea or an ocean um, or living in the middle of a big, vast landmass. <clears throat> I would say try to anybody who is curious about this. <laughs> mm, that's beautiful. Um, I was once I once received an Akashic record reading from somebody over the past year, and she who is she does not have a lot of connection to ET material, but out of nowhere in the reading, she said you're, and she was trying so hard in this trance she was in to describe 
<clears throat> these people I was from. And then she goes, oh, you know, they come in and out of the water. And I'm like, you know, we were going back and <laughs> forth with a few words until we hit on dolphins. She says, yes, 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 yes. You, you have that connection with that. That was your tribe. And I, exactly what you were saying, the smiles, I was picturing them and going, oh my God, that just feels so right to me. <laughs> that, right? The whole spirit of joy and whatever that exactly. is exactly yay and the high pitch whistles and everything well it's true i really am convinced by now because of also the experience i had when i was six and i had that dream i'm absolutely convinced that um the soul so to speak uh you know that we have and that they have uh we can we can you can incarnate as a human being in one life and then if you're looking at it linearly of course and then as a dolphin in the next one of course, this is all coexisting simultaneously, but um, you know what I mean. And I really feel that these lifetimes um, weave together very beautifully to support our process, having the human experience and to support their process, having the dolphin experience and learning from each other and growing from each other in that way. And I think, I believe that we could lift that to a much more conscious level in the future. And I know there's people working on that today and the fact that more and more um there there's even a petition i think it's called something like human rights for cetaceans and and if if anyone listening in <laughs> google that find find it sign it because you will be doing a good deed if like for christmas or something i don't know <laughs> any any excuse sign it because um the world is becoming slowly but surely aware of how incredibly intelligent and empathic these uh, animals quote unquote are because uh, they're as sentient as are we they're very conscious about themselves if you you hold a mirror up to a dolphin they know they're looking at themselves like most animals are like what's this there's another cat in the room or another dog you know like dolphins understand they're just looking at an image of themselves and that's just a very crude example of their intelligence but this is what some people may refer to and uh, so am I in the general sense of the word. But like I said, you can have a conversation, you can invite them in your meditations, you can ask for their assistance while you're pregnant, while you're giving birth. They actually love that. They're very involved with our species. They understand what we're moving through and that we're on the threshold of tipping to a new era. And since they're already in that zone of telepathy and unity and harmony, they're very, very enthusiastic of inviting us to communicate with them more consciously so that they can show us the way in a sense so that we may understand more and on a deeper level how we could implement these type of qualities in our own society. So something else that is going to happen, and I'm wondering how much you know about this coming up, that is progressive. <laughs> maybe part of the end of this incredible year we've had is this <laughs> uh, December 21st. And I'm wondering what you know about this for the days before the days after they're mm -hmm. saying it promises like a really intense amplification of whatever we're choosing individually and collectively when uh, Jupiter and Saturn create an alignment that they have not yet, well, let me just put it this way, have not since in 450 uh -huh. years so pay yes. attention right and for yes. people who want to learn more go to earthsky.org it's a great site to to learn more so at their very closest on december 21st they're going to be 0 0.1 degrees apart which is amazing so what do you know about this solstice jupiter saturn alignment mm -hmm. well um let me start by saying what i've learned from the hybrids uh, that I channel is that um, astrology in general reflects mm. us. It doesn't reign us. It doesn't rule over us. Um, so what we're looking at is an announcement from our own inner selves, really, as a mirror reflection back to us that we are all collectively moving into the direction of something really special. And um, people who are astrologers who are really deeply into this and explain that to us in a beautiful way, um when you feel that resonates really strongly with you clearly in a sense you're remembering what deep within yourself you were already 
either wishing or you know desiring or knowing to be true so i think we are collectively creating this wonderful alignment which is literally an alignment to to become obvious to us in the in the heavens and um yeah i'm excited to see what that will bring i realize it, it is opening up a lot of doors for really extreme and exciting opportunities um i'm looking at it as a roller coaster of high vibes that you can step into uh, really enthusiastically or with a little bit of fear so we have that choice um we always do anyway um i'm the kind of person who doesn't want to um over dramatize or put a lot of emphasis on one particular cosmic event. Also because I realized that um, as Arjuna's explained it to me, the time frame is um, an indication. And that's what you actually just touched upon when you said the days before, the day after, it's a window. So it's a window that you can step through and you will in one way or another step through it uh, how that will happen and whether it will be tangible for you or even remarkable in the least um, is to be seen, you know, it differs per person. It really does because some people don't really get quote unquote hit with the energy of that or the potential of that until maybe a month later. So this is the tricky part about setting a date as hard cut as it appears to us. That's the thing with cosmo cosmology anyway. You're looking at a star, or you think you're looking at a star, it may have died out like so many thousand years ago, right? But the light is still there. So there's this warped thing about astrology that makes it super punctual, super wonderful as a clear polished mirror reflection about our energies and in what direction we're moving. And simultaneously, you're looking at something that is very fluid, very ungraspable, like what is it really? I mean, the picture that is uh, coming to us has a delay to it. So our time space reality is being tested in a sense with the stories that we're telling us ourselves. And that to me is like a little bridge reminder to the fact that we're living in a physical dream floating in a cosmic soup. <laughs> That's what we're doing. That's what we are. And um, the more fluid we can be with all of that, those things unfolding, the more we can just go with the flow, which is anyway the message, um, the more reflections and quote unquote rational proof you will then see of these stories as they're being represented to us. But, you know, if it doesn't resonate with you, you won't see proof of it either, most likely. So it's so super personal and subjective. But I do see a window. I feel it more than I see it. Like it's more in my senses than it's in my mind. I feel a shift already for, for a few weeks, actually, right now, where I'm starting to get really psyched and optimistic for 2021. And yeah, stuff is, is shifting. It's like, the, your background right now in your video uh, and that the bright, bright light behind your head, it's like this blue, there's a blue field and there's this bursting of light. There's some light bursting through. That's kind of what I'm feeling is happening right now. Mm. Um, and I find more and more ease in listening to um, whenever I manifest a reflection of the news or a version of that in my version of reality. Um, whatever doesn't resonate with me within that i can let it slide by me so much more effortlessly than in the beginning of the year i was a little challenged by stuff but um i'm feeling more solid in the game and probably that's also simply a result of me doing my own facing my fears you know um so it's super individual that's what i want to say probably most about this but yeah i can feel a very very high potential potential for a lot of light to come in and through and to become tangible for others as well in their own lives. Yeah, so everybody enjoy this great conjunction coming up on December 21st on the solstice. Mm -hmm. And it also ushers in the age of Aquarius, right? It's gonna yes. usher in Aquarius, which is amazing because that's very query. Mm -hmm. Aquarians know this about themselves, but also the energy of Aquarius, very forward thinking, very new, very inventive, very fresh, which 
Lord, we all need that. <laughs> I think we're <laughs> ripe and ready for fresh and unique and innovative and a whole new way of doing things and showing up. Um, I think, you know, so that's, that's beautiful. That I find that very exciting and very apropos. And I like the permission. It feels like that you've given all of that, that it's like, don't just look at the 21st and, you know, wah, wah, yeah. if things don't happen, it's, this is an ongoing process, but it's definitely showing up at the sky, in the skies, informing us mm -hmm. of here. And here we are yeah. informing also the skies. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's a, it's a ping pong game. We inform each other, you're right. It's a two-way stream of information. And um, with your okay, in a few minutes, I'd like to bring on Arjun. Yes. And I, would you preface, and again, folks, go back and watch her first interview. It's just, it couldn't be more yummy. You <laughs> get so much out of it. So tell us, so this is the fifth hybrid race, the Yael, from which yeah. Arjun are said, is said to come from. And they look most similar to us, I believe, mm -hmm. because the amount of DNA in their makeup is, is quite a bit more human, let's say, than yeah. other uh, terrestrials from, or uh, it's so weird, extraterrestrial. I don't know how to delineate anymore. That mm -hmm. space That's has okay. become smaller for me in my <laughs> mind. But other planets, planet beings, let's say. Would you just give us some, uh, preface to Arjun and to the Yael. Um, okay, so you already said the Yael is the fifth race of the hybridization program that has been taking place between the what we understand to be grace, but are actually a future version spin-off of the human race. Um, but they look so very different, you know, it's like the cartoons, the gray, well, I'm just really generalizing here, but to give people who are new to the material an impression, the, the grays are those, you know, with, with, with the big heads and the black eyes, uh, or that's at least how they're being depicted. Um, as I learned later, the black eyes are actually lenses, <laughs> but um, sidetrack. <laughs> so they had to, um, they, well, they, they found themselves at a point in, in future, which is one version of Earth where uh, they had polluted the planet to such a degree that they had to move underground. They started to clone each other or themselves at some point because um, normal way of, um, how do you call that? <laughs> um, Co-creating? Co-create, thank you, uh, didn't work anymore. And then the cloning also didn't work anymore. They were very much mentally oriented, very much, you know, science, um, you know, that kind of thinking. The heart was really cut out of the, the game. And that's why nature or all that is, or source, whatever you want to call it, at some point said, okay, guys, <laughs> this is as far as you can take it. Um, this, is, this is eventually literally going to be a dead end. If you're going to continue down this path and they realized that when they discovered they couldn't even clone their own species anymore and that came as quite a shock and then they realized the only way to get viable dna to to pursue the existence of their species would be to tunnel back through sp space and time as we understand it or that's this is how we would put it um, through the multi-dimensional layers of reality to the version of earth where dna was still not as polluted and damaged as was theirs. So um, this is what, what is understood to be the idea of the hybridization program. Uh, they did travel back through space and time. They found a way to do that with assistance of another species, by the way. Um, and these are what are the so-called abduction experiences, ET abductions, that a lot of people have heard about. Um, that program started a bit of rough that's why a lot of these et abduction experiences and it's in the word abduction already a little bit right that there is no free will there is but in most occasions it wasn't tangible to those first particularly participants because they don't remember their soul agreement um but eventually it became like a milder process let's say <laughs> and the new species that were created out of this genetic um, combination of our DNA, what our human, as we know ourselves to be, and theirs, 
slowly but surely led to more and more human-like looking um, ETs. And every race was really aimed to be heart-centered. So that was really, really important. The Greys understood, they had learned from the past, that what was really needed uh, on their path of de development was love, simple, simple, plain love, unconditional love, you know, with no restrictions and no scientific mindset about, you know, how and what and, and you know, none of that. So they, they made these new species to become more of that, to embody more of that, so that through time and space, they could build a bridge of entities that would eventually be so close to us that they that we could reach out and i always have to think of that painting of leonardo da vinci you know where david and <laughs> you know with the finger um so it's that that's been done the the fifth uh, species is the most human-like looking result of that project they are the yayel they call themselves the yahiel um and uh, they're so alike to us that if we would meet, you wouldn't, you may not, like if they would walk on the street, immediately see that they're extraterrestrial. You wouldn't necessarily, or multidimensional, better said. You wouldn't immediately see that. Uh, but if you would come closer, the energy and everything, it would give it away, for sure. <laughs> so the idea is that by creating these species, they would look back in a sense, offering us as mankind a reminder, because that's what they're giving us, these, these hybrid species, the people that channel them, like myself, um, we are all more or less bringing through the same message. I mean, roughly, it's the same message. The hybrids are very clearly through a multitude of channelers at this point in time, reminding humanity of the fact that we have a choice that we don't have to walk down the pathway that the greys did, that we can choose love now, we can embody it now, we can create heaven on earth now, it's within us, we can self-empower ourselves. There's this wonderful message wherein they're giving us an opportunity um, to pick a new path and change the different routes. And that was the real actual goal of the hybridization program. It wasn't to suppress us and scare us in our bedrooms as children <laughs> to take our DNA against our will, even though it may have been experienced that way by some people. And I have a lot of respect for any and all of them. And I've been one of them. So I understand that that's been rough, but I also understand that we can learn and grow beyond that and see through it and see the higher purpose of all of that. And we can take that open invitation, but we don't have to. And that's the beauty. They come non-invasive and that's the idea of channeling and why it is occurring as it is um, they're speaking through one of our own species so any other human being tuning in listening to this crazy human being over here doing the translation you don't have to believe that it is what i say it is it's about the message more than it is about the messenger and so we are getting this information and we can choose to apply it if that's our highest excitement, if we wish to do so. And if we do, it will prove to us empirically that it works. And that's what they're so passionate about, to reflect back to us our own inner knowingness, uh, the way they always say it is of what we already knew but have temporarily chosen to forget. <laughs> and so that's what's going on. And if we choose to embody and use this information that is in a sense also already ours in our lives as human beings, then at some point we will raise our energy frequency enough, first of all, to create you know, peace on earth, harmony here amongst ourselves, which is amazing already, you know, I'm signing up for that, even without the ET contact. <laughs> and secondary, we will open up our doors energetically for the possibility of meeting them in, you know, like physical form and to be here together on this planet, um, live here, share experiences and stretch out our cosmic antennas a little further they may teach us about the universe uh, we may teach teach them about our planet and we can learn and grow together and 
I think that's the wonderful gift that's hiding in here that is possible for us. Not like it has to happen that way, but these doors are opening up with the channeled information as it's coming through to my understanding. So yeah, just, I hope that's a good introduction. <laughs> it's a beautiful introduction. Um, there was some really nice meat in there, if you will. <laughs> um, <laughs> And an inherent question I already have for Arjun right. based on that awesome share. So yes, uh, very respectfully, I want to um, give you the space for what you need to do now in order to invite right. Arjun in and for me to welcome Arjun back to the show. Um, mm -hmm. Beautiful to re-engage. I'm looking forward to this. Okay, then. Well, as you know, uh, anybody who's been watching the previous uh, interview that we did together, Debbie, and you yourself, I start with a little guided meditation. Uh, I'm going to do it out loud. It's the same thing uh, I did the last time. It's uh, very effective. It's short. <laughs> and it's my way of connecting to our June. Um, so anybody who wishes to join in, um, relax. <laughs> Ah, and start by taking a few nice deep breaths in and out, if you will. And with every out breath, release all the tension that might still be in your body or in your mind at this moment. Let go of the day thus far and focus, if you can, on your heart space. And from your heart, if you will, imagine a silver line of energy flowing down through your body, down through your belly, down through your legs, all the way down to your feet, through the building and into the ground. And imagine it sinking deeper and deeper, moving effortlessly through all the layers of the earth. Until eventually you reach the center of the earth, the heart of the planet. And whatever this looks like to you right now in your imagination, it is absolutely perfect. And you're being warmly welcomed to make a strong connection to this place in a way that feels natural and logical to you right now. And when you feel that you have in your own way made that connection, imagine that earth energy then flowing through your silver line, traveling back up through all the layers of the earth, returning to the house and the room that you're in. And imagine that earth energy then flowing into your body, starting at your feet, moving up to your knees, hugging every single cell along the way. From your knees, moving up to your hips, same thing happens. Every cell begins to resonate in harmony from your hips to your belly or lower back, up along the spine and into your chest. And with the next deep and calm breath in, picture that earth energy then flowing into your heart and filling it up completely. And then if you wish, imagine that same silver line now going on a second journey, this time moving upward from your heart, through your throat, through your head, through the crown chakra, through the building and into the sky and higher and higher beyond the clouds, beyond the ozone layer, and into the universe, your silver line flies absolutely effortlessly, this time amongst the planets and the stars, until eventually you reach the central sun of your solar system. And here too, you're being warmly welcomed to make a strong connection to the center point of the sun in whatever way you feel is logical and natural to do right now. When you feel that you have also in your own way made that connection, imagine, if you will, that solar energy too, then flowing through your silver line, traveling back across the universe, returning to your blue little magical planet that you call Earth, returning to your country, the region or state that you are focused in, the house and eventually room that you're choosing to be focused in at this moment in your time. And then if you will, imagine that solar energy too, flowing into your body, Starting very gently at the top of your head, moving through your head, through your neck, back and front, into your chest, between and around the shoulder blades. And with the next deep and calm breath in, 
imagine that solar energy too then flowing into your heart and merging with the earth energy frequency that was already present there in a never ending golden spiral. And if you wish, you can put one or both of your hands on your heart for a moment to anchor there, to land there. For this is where heaven meets earth within you. It is the door through which we speak, the window through which we see at this moment of your time. For dear friends, we are here and we thank you for the invitation of the co-creation of this here and now. Now, how have you been and how can we be of service? Arjun, first of all, welcome and thank you. My God, that was so beautiful. I really powerfully felt that and still feel it. Thank you so much. Hmm. Well, thank you so much. A little bit ago, when I was speaking with Vidika and she was expressing how the Yael came about through the hybridization program and that once upon a time, the greys had lost the connection to love and to the care of the planet. And through yes. the hybridization program, that much of this has been brought back in the Yael people. And I'm really curious that in our ability to connect, that we not make the same mistake as the greys. Uh, that we can learn to focus on love, that we can focus on loving the planet, focus on loving humanity and ourselves. And I like the hope in that. And I will admit that sometimes I see hopeful things, but overall, I do not feel hopeful that that All is right. our path. All right. Yes. Why so I- Why is that? Pardon? Why is that? Because I see so much <clears throat> fighting on the planet, I see so much um, separation based on race and gender and color and age, because I see politics that even though it's breaking down, are it's, it's got an enormous level of insanity and not care for people. And a lot of um, lack of care for the planet, the health of the planet, the oceans and the skies. And so I, I guess it feels quite overwhelming to me when I look out. And although there are pockets, if I spend time with certain 20 and 30 year olds, young, young people, I see so much hope in the things they're interested in and the ways they're being and the tribes they're creating and being interested in medicine and ceremony. And that makes me feel hopeful. And then I look out and I see, you know, the world going the way it's been going quite quickly and it's disheartening. So I'm wondering as a Yael, do you have advice? Do you have wisdom? Do you have hope for us? Oh, we don't need hope. We fully trust. Hope still implies just a little bit of doubt, you see. When a person says, I hope that goes right, it includes usually the possibility of something going wrong within your dictionary, you see. So we don't have to hope. We see it there for you already. And that's the version of reality that we are focused on. And that's the human race that we're speaking with right now. We're speaking to the portion of you, if you will, that has a higher probability within themselves to take that particular route of evolution than to take the route that the grace took, you see. And those that don't resonate with our energy frequency, a section of them doesn't resonate with it because they don't contain that energy frequency of that particular future path, you see. So in other words, we're not spending our time speaking to ears that are deaf to the energy frequency that we're representing. And if you can hear us now, whoever is listening, you contain within you a higher probability right now that you will see that future of harmony and balance developing in your version of Earth, you see. We're speaking to those that have a real, you could say, probability of meeting us potentially one day in your future, you see. So to bring it back to the here and now, as you would say, even though everything is existing simultaneously and side by side in your multidimensional reality, what you just shared with us, and thank you for your very personal sharing, you may have heard this saying before on your own planet, where attention goes, energy flows, 
right? Yes. So first of all, that is true in all cases. What you focus upon, you amplify the frequency of within your own version of reality. Now, the way you interpret a particular scenario that you're focusing upon in your version of reality depends on your belief system. And for many people, their beliefs are hiding somewhere in the subconscious. They do not become aware of those negative beliefs if they are negative, unless they feel a no, lower energy frequency vibration to point it out to them that there is a negative belief hiding in the subconscious, you see. So every single lower energy frequency emotion that you may be feeling, such as anger, frustration, overwhelm, like you just mentioned, hopelessness, all these type of emotions, energy in motions, are pointing out to you like very gentle and loving reminders. There's something here that you may want to just stop for a moment and have a look at. And that will reveal to you if you take that moment, if you take that pause, that there is a belief. You can ask yourself the question in that time, in that moment of catching yourself, feeling that low energy frequency emotion. You can ask yourself the question, what would I have to believe to be true in order for me to have this feeling as I'm feeling it right now? What is quote unquote dictating from behind or from the dark that I feel this way? What am I believing to be true about the scenario that I'm observing? And the moment you lay that out for yourself, whatever belief may pop up, in that moment, it will reveal some level of you giving your power away. That's why it feels so bad. That's why there is a low energy frequency emotion connected to it. And the beauty of discovering a belief that inherently results in you giving your power away, not self-empowering yourself, the beauty of seeing that is that in the moment of consciously seeing it, it's no longer hiding in the subconscious, you can now rewrite it. You can rewrite the belief. We gave this example recently to a group of humans that we spoke to. For instance, a lot of you guys are very sensitive to the idea of conflict in general, because within your hearts and within your higher selves, you know that that's not preferred. You all have an inner longing for harmony as a whole. You have it innately within you. And this is why conflict, when you observe it, quote unquote, outside of you in your reflective mirror reality, most people would like to take a step back or not be too close to that or not get involved. You probably recognize this, don't mm -hmm. you? Yes. So as an example, we told the group of humans that we spoke to that, a person may see a couple fighting in the street. They may observe it from the other end of the street, for instance. And this couple, they're raising their voices. They're really being nasty to each other. And they may feel an ache in their heart for what they see happening over there. Or they may frown with concern. Or they may think something like, oh, I hope that ends well. And in that moment of feeling the energy that is lowering the corners of your mouth, and that is making the frown, creating the frown on your forehead. In that moment, you could stop yourself right there and ask yourself, what do you believe to be true about this particular scenario that makes you feel this way? And you will see that in many occasions, people think something like, that is very sad what's happening over there because clearly these people do not love each other or they may break up or whatever it is that your society, your movies, your parents, your schools, your you name it, have taught you to believe has to be the norm. And because this doesn't fit in with that norm, you feel sad. You don't feel sad because you are thinking of this reason all by yourself. What we're saying is that this particular reason you have adopted, it is a program that you have chosen to buy into. If it was something that you came up with all by yourself, that is your natural energy frequency state, it would be of optimism, it would be of love, it would be something like, let us give you an example, seeing the couple fight on the other end of the street and thinking to yourself, for instance, wow, look at the immense volume 
that that woman is using with her voice, she would be an incredible singer. She could think <laughs> something like that. Or look at the passion with which these two are sharing their points of view right now, interrupting each other and all of that. But I know that this information that is being shouted out there across the street between the two of them has, ha has a lot of momentum behind it. It has been wanted. It has been wanting to share. This information has been wanted to hear before. It has so much momentum. I can feel the force behind it. It is like popping a cork from a champagne bottle. It is something that needs to be seen, that wants to be in the light. And they probably have been misunderstanding each other's point of view for weeks, for months, maybe even for years. And right now, because they're finally speaking their deepest fears, they're speaking their judgments, they're just speaking it all out. They can look at each other anew. This may be the deepening of their relationship. This may also be the end of it. it. Yes, it might be. But if it is the end of their relationship, they will free each other from these shackles that they've been walking around with for a really long time. They will probably flourish on their own in a way that they're not giving each other space to do right now. There is so many ways that you can choose to look at this that is self-empowering, not just for you as an observer, but for them. So this is what we say. When you witness conflict, when you witness struggle, when you witness other people stumbling along, if you will, in the old paradigm way of labeling that, see if you can dig beneath the programming that you have been spoon fed since being a child and look for these wonderful, heartwarming, empowering for everyone involved points of view that we know are hiding in each and every one of you because it is within your heart. You can reach into there. You can pick that up and lift it to the surface and it will not only liberate yourself, it will liberate those that you're observing. Because if you choose to look at somebody with empowerment for yourself and them included, it will ripple through time and space. It will be an energetic wave and it will embrace everything and everyone that comes in the way of it. And it is infinite. It reaches until the corners of the universe and beyond. It really doesn't end. So once you choose to become the beacon of light that we know you all inherently are born to be, it will have an effect and you do not have to doubt your future or anybody else's because you will be on the wavelength of that harmonious energy frequency that you are choosing to send out and be focused on. Now, how does that feel? Really interesting. A lot of things oh, came to mind. Thank you. Uh, first was the idea that uh, I don't believe it till I see it. And that's a really interesting belief for somebody who also concurrently can be a major manifester because you don't necessarily see things first. You, you step into and then it becomes. And that's like, to me, the penultimate creation. So there was oh, that yeah. limitation that came up. And then towards the end, when you were sharing about um, the things we brought forward, I was thinking about, you know, I, I, I grew up in a household that had a lot of negativity about what was going on politically or in the world, you know, maybe overreaction, frankly. And so, yeah, maybe I have some of that going on inside of me. Um, and, and it's interesting, the duality too, because in fact, in that aspect as well, just I think indigenously, I have a lot of optimism as a person and positivity in general. So it's interesting to have a, foot in both of these worlds and one clearly is not assisting me right the one that is saying oh doom and gloom I hope but I'm not seeing and then this other that feels very positive is creating her own life has a separation from all of that and um, is going forward as though things will be well well if we may jump in there is that okay I would love that yes all right well thank you for this sharing from your optimistic point of view, then, you could choose 
to see all of that that you call your past as you create it from the now you could see all of that as serving you now including your childhood including the way you've been raised because the moment you lift it to consciousness and you see the energy frequency that you've been spoon fed to believe to be true and you rewrite it you can be grateful for it because now you can see both ends of the spectrum, can't you? You've transformed it for yourself and you can empathize with people who haven't yet. Mm -hmm. So that makes you a bridge builder. It makes you compatible in a sense with more people so that you can reach more of them. You can share from your own experiences what you know hasn't worked for you in what you call the past. And you can share your process of transformation, going through that, facing your fears, embracing every single segment of what you, for instance, in this example, call your childhood. You can hug energetically the parents that raised you when they were at the age that they had when they raised you. You can hug the entire scenario as you remember it in this here and now focus point. And you can say thank you to it for all that it has brought you because isn't it because of that particular particular challenge and that strife and that agony really of feeling imprinted with these type of glasses with this type of filter looking at the world seeing wrongdoing left and right all the time isn't it because of that that right now whilst you're discovering how to become more conscious of that and to transform every single segment of that every particle of that isn't it because of all of that together that you can now feel the liberation that you can now feel the weight drop off your shoulders that you can feel yourself ready to stand into the light and shine brighter than ever before you would never even know what it means to shine brighter than ever before if there wasn't a seeming darker before that you see so you're painting your painting with contrast. You're painting it with polarity. And therefore, we can say, kiss the polarity, give it a big hug, say thank you to it because it brought you to here where you can now literally feel within your physical body the upliftment of transformation. And it is that that you came to give yourself in the remembrance of who you really are, which is what you're doing in this humanly focused and humanly oriented lifetime. You're remembering who you really are and you're not even half, quote unquote, and we don't mean that in a negative sense at all, but you're not even as a species, half the human you could be. And we know that sometimes you say about yourselves, oh, well, that's only human, you know, and we know that by that you often mean in a funny way that you're denigrating yourself for the circumstances. And we would say, don't talk about yourselves that way don't because you're so beautiful and there is no such thing as only human you're amazingly human human is is you have no words for that in your language yet we have to search within the database of the channel to even get something close which surpasses brilliant breathtakingly amazing in awe is what we are with your journey of transformation it's not for no reason that we call you as hybrids Sasan, Shahiel, and Yahiel alike. We call you human beings. We call you the masters of limitation. And we don't mean that denigrating in any way, shape, or form. The masters is where the emphasis is on. Masters of limitations. You would never dive into a physical dream reality. Not understanding somewhere deep down within that you can handle the density of that particular frequency realm. You would never dive in if you did not possess the tools within yourself to play with that and to create what seems havoc to become light. And this is what you're doing, what you can choose to do more consciously. But this is what you're do doing in general, in a sense, is with the upliftment of your species, with the development spiritually of your race and you can take it many directions and yes the pathway is still open to take it to a more lower energy frequency excursion if you will but you will find if that's the path you take that also this type of information can no longer reach you but again those that we're speaking with right now that are receiving this type of information are on the wavelength of that propelling forward and snowballing 
and getting bigger and getting more momentum. So why worry, you say? And just to hook back onto what you said about seeing is believing. We understand that that's another belief that you've been spoon fed, most of you. Really, you've got it upside down there, if we may be so bold. It's believing is seeing, and it's been that all along, you see. If you look around you, in your home, the objects that you have are on the street and the sidewalks and what have you. If you look at all of these things, they were thought of before they were created. And nature itself is the crystallization of consciousness itself, of source energy itself. Everything is first non-physical, an idea, a thought, a love, before it crystallizes into beingness through the same power of unconditional love. So it's always believing is seeing. It's the inventor that knows something can be done and chooses to feel optimistic about that. In the, this combination is key. To feel optimistic, to feel your way into a probable reality where something must be able to exist, whether it is cleaning the plastic from your oceans or anything else that may seem overwhelming to you right now as a species feeling into that with trust and love and surrender envisioning it even though you can't exactly practically put one and one together and make it a two just yet because you don't know how it will be done but feeling optimistic about it whilst perhaps if that's your calling you're working on on such a solution that's what will allow you to shift to a version of reality where that is already done where an invention will be brought to the light pop up in your reality or in your mind so that you can create it that will help manifest that idea in your space-time reality you see wow. it all comes from the non-physical first the bigger part of you is in the non-physical right now mm -hmm. you're only dreaming that you're having a physical reality mm -hmm. with a small small tiny tiny <laughs> section of the soul entity that you are you see so it's believing and seeing. You believe you can do this or you wouldn't be physically oriented in this version of reality. You, by you, this time we mean your soul, we mean your higher self. You believe you've got this or you wouldn't be focused in this. No matter how low you feel, no matter how much you may doubt your capabilities as a human being, no matter how much you may be telling yourself every day, I'm not cut out for this particular life, I must be in the wrong place. That's okay, that's your free will. You can choose to look at your life that way. You have free will. You get to paint your picture with these colors if you like. And that is all legit as an experience. All that is, is learning from your point of view no matter what angle you take it from. So there is no being off your path. You're always on your path since you are your path. You create it with the way you choose to look at your version of reality. And it's all legit. And so you can say you're worthless even if you wish, but you're not. And the fact that you exist and the fact that you can even say that proves the contrary to you because you wouldn't be able to say that if you really were. Existence loves you. You're a unique and absolutely necessary facet within all that is. Literally, it would not be all that is if you were not included in it, now would it, you see? And so thank you to you and everybody listening in for being who you are, exactly where you're at. And the moment you embrace that moment of who you are and exactly where you're at, is when you'll begin to see quote unquote proof of reflections in what you call your outer world showing you that you're beginning to quote unquote move away from it because there's no moving away from something that you put resistance into you see we've said before jokingly hating it is dating it the longer you hate where you're at the longer you will seem to stay stuck in it so love it with any out of the box thoughts that you can possibly allow into your system. Love it from a crazy angle that you haven't invited yourself to look from before at what you're observing. And the moment you start loving it, it will begin to feel lighter. And the moment it feels lighter, you're allowing in 
from that new energy frequency that you're embodying in that moment, new reflections from what you call your outer reality to become apparent to you, to crystallize before you, the answers to your question, the synchronicities that show you the house, the new job, the financial solution, whatever it is that you've been craving for. And it will give you an answer, a an solution, a new hint of a direction that you may perhaps wish to venture into rather than the direction you thought you had to venture into previously. Mm -hmm. uh, like the Asasani, the Yael have brought a lot of timeless knowledge from outer space. Can you talk about what the overlap is between crystals and sacred geometry? Well, in a sense, crystals are quite literal embodiment of sacred geometry. They contain it within themselves. You must have seen many shapes and forms and slices and under microscopes of crystals. Even in a sense, you could say that this is wonderfully represented by ice crystals or what you call snowflakes. Sacred geometry all over, you see. So that would be the biggest overlap. And then as an energy frequency, you could say that crystals are the fundament within your physical reality structure or realm or kingdom even you could say from which everything else then eventually fine tunes into new shapes and orders but it will all still be containing the crystal platform or blueprint within itself so if you go from crystal kingdom to plant kingdom now, plants have a very different way of living, as do crystals, but they do have their own consciousness. And plants do still, if you tune in with their energy frequency, and if you look at segments of plants under the microscope, you will still find sacred geometry. You will find that in anything. In nature, sacred geometry is everywhere. It's the fundamental blueprints in the sense of the design of nature itself in many ways but in crystals it's very obvious and in plants you would have to look a little deeper for it and in animals even a little deeper if you're looking about your if you're talking about your visible world your tangible world the way you can scientifically research it now energetically you could say that even though you all contain crystals in any way shape or form even you as humans contain crystalline forms within your body all the way through and these are crucial for your existence and to function properly within your bodies. You contain many minerals and crystalline forms that are within your beingness. But if you compare a bare crystal like a quartz to a human being, now there's a huge difference in perceiving reality. And because the quartz represents simply the blueprint level, you could say in manifest form, just that, just cleanly that. As a human being, with the way you're exploring consciousness, you can interact with the crystal and use that blank slate, in a sense, to play with. You can use the crystal as an antenna or a receiver. And quite literally, this has been done in many of your inventions, starting with, for instance, your radio. You know this, don't you? I know this, absolutely. Yes, Rose Creek. Right. So the idea of using crystals in that way means that you can play with them and this is why within the spiritual scene a lot of crystals are being used in all types of rituals and as a permission slip for the amplification of a particular idea you can send a thought or a loving intention to a crystal and it will literally encapsulate or embrace the harmony wavelength of the intention that you feed it and so in that way, you can use it as a tool, as a reflection, because remember everything seemingly around you and even your body, everything in the physical is a permission slip, is a tool in your journey of spiritual expansion. So there's nothing depending on this. There is no need to insist on this working a specific way or forcing intention onto it. It's something that you can choose to play with if you will. And from that love-based, light-hearted energy frequency, crystals may serve people in many, many ways if they choose to believe that they can. They can really get into a very personal interaction with these crystals, with these minerals, with these 
quote unquote stones in a very unique manner, you see. So that's one way to look at it. Beautiful. Does that help? Yeah, that's, it, it, it's very interesting. Um, it's, it's to me, I'm thinking almost when you take things to a subatomic level, there's so much inherently going on within things that yes. we're not even aware of on a conscious level, but there's so much life underneath life underneath life blueprints underneath yeah. blueprints That's you will contain your own me. inner universes mm. it really never ends it literally never ends mm. uh, well uh, speaking of universes in an article in the guardian they were interviewing scientists and the scientists estimated that there are 36 worlds out there that are capable of communicating with others uh, what's your knowledge about that is that accurate as far as contactable alien civilizations out there? Well, there's an infinite amount of worlds that you can cross connect with closest to you would be the other versions of earth. Mm, interesting, so that's parallel where, universes? Exactly, so that's where that starts. Even we spoke about this shortly last time we spoke, when we talked about the idea of tuning in with something that might happen in the future mm -hmm. and the feedback you get from your inner self. The sensations you get when you wonder, shall I, for instance, move to that house or shouldn't I? And in making this consideration, you may get a very strong sensation that it would be a good idea to do so. And we said to you the last time we spoke, that may very well be a future version of you that is already living in that house and tremendously enjoying it. So you're speaking to yourselves through time and space already. So even right there, the parallel versions of Earth that you can choose to communicate with start there, are intrinsically woven into your here and now perception of reality, whether you're consciously aware of it or not. Now, we understand that the author of the article was most likely referring to planets and societies in the cosmos, right? That would be very other or somewhat other than your own that you could choose to connect with. And yes, then there are certainly 36 way more, an infinite amount. We haven't even counted them all just yet. And now we're not just talking your solar system, but beyond. So mm -hmm. out there, there is an infinite amount of species and entities and beings of which many we don't even know just yet that are capable of connecting with us. But just think about this. Within all that is, everything has an energy frequency. So does a thought. So if you think about the possibility of something being out there that may be of what you understand to be the level of intellect, just to give it a label, that would make it possible for them to connect with you in a way that you might somewhat understand. The moment you can come up with that thought, in fact, already proves to you that that must exist. Because the thought itself has an energy frequency to it and it matches that actual society or any society that matches this particular idea. So whatever you think of in one way, shape or form has a level of existence to it, whether it is in your universe or another, whether it is physical or non-physical. Everything that you can think of has a quality and energy frequency of itself. And this is why entertaining positive thoughts has such, such a wonderful effect, ripple effect on your lives. Because even though you're entertaining a positive thought that you think you may never quote unquote, be able to manifest into your actual reality. The energy frequency of it, and as long as you continue to entertain it, will ripple into your reality and it may manifest in versions of it, you see. And you may see little winks from the universe mm. that fragments of what you're playing around with in your head and feeling optimistic about, this is key, this is always key to connect it to the feeling energy frequency. Otherwise you're just projecting stuff. This is not about imprinting mentally something that needs to happen in your future. This is about feeling the joy and really reveling in the idea without hanging all types of consequences or 
insistencies around it so that it could possibly manifest. You don't have to push your way through time and space to allow things to manifest in your version of reality. That's why it's called allowing to manifest. And a little earlier, you said, how is it possible that we can choose to be focused on relatively negative stuff mm -hmm. and just be focused on positive stuff once in a while and yeah. still be a master manifester, right? Remember? Yeah, exactly. And we want to reflect back to you with all the love that we can muster. Mm -hmm. Please, you are all master manifestors. Mm -hmm. You all are. You're born master manifestors. Right now, wherever you're sitting, wherever you're being, whatever you're focused on, whatever you observe around you, you're manifesting it. Hmm. That's, you're manifesting that, all of that. If you would look at a cup of tea, it's a miracle onto itself. If you would really sit and stop and think about you manifested that. You manifested the entire orchestration of the universe, all the human beings that mm -hmm. participated in thinking of that cup of tea and then creating it and making it with ceramics or what have you, and then delivering it to your doorstep in your version of reality. And that whole storyline is just an excuse that makes it believable for the rational mind that the cup of tea is right now here. And there's truth to that storyline, but the truth is also that that cup of tea onto itself has its own experience of reality and is being recreated and recreated and recreated every single nanosecond you're holding it. You're doing that. It's this and that, not this or that. And that's magic onto itself. So just grabbing something from your direct environment or just putting your hands on the table and feeling the solidity of it in your version of reality may help you ground into the remembrance of the fact what a master manifester you already are. And that loops back to the idea of loving where you're at. And then that will help you get into more tangible shifts of reality into a version that might be more preferred for you if that's what you're choosing to explore oh thank you for that woo, woo, woo. Oh, so ding ding it ding through. it's just so gorgeous because i feel enormous gratitude that i manifested this connection with you i feel like oh. you know how did i get so lucky which you know i say tongue-in-cheek and at the same time, I feel very humble that, you know, once upon a time, this wasn't a conversation. And then when I started with you six months ago, you know, I came with, oh, I came with some stuff, you know, based on my preconceived notions. And I feel like in six months, I've come incredibly far uh, with this connection with you, with this idea of extraterrestrials. Now it is, of course, and of course, conversation. And the fact that I even, get to have this time with you to nurture these ideas and to keep forwarding, you know, what's possible here to the point of gaining wisdom from you, insight from you, and even dare I say, you know, at some point a real true interaction with you or another extraterrestrial that makes me like so excited. <laughs> Well, thank you for loving yourself so much because the excitement you're feeling is your own natural energy frequency. The reason you resonate with what you're receiving as information through this channel and from us in this way as you are is because you remember, you're reconnecting to the larger part of yourself. And that's why we so often say we're only reflecting back to you that which you already know but have temporarily chosen to forget. You see, that's very much truly the case. We're here at your invitation, like we've said before. And we know you're asking, we understand your yearning for understanding better who you are. And it is in your passion and your self-love and your excitement of discovering more of who you are, that you are now falling in love with yourselves. And darling, there is no more beautiful thing than that for us to see. And we don't mean that in a narcissistic way, obviously. We mean that for each and every single one of you who is willing to embrace themselves full-heartedly with everything they see, exactly where they're at. That's the idea of an all-compassing love, all-encompassing love. So once you treat yourself 
like the lover that you might be longing for in your version of reality. We're now speaking to all the people that are in that way, having this type of desire. Once you treat yourself that way, you become the energy frequency of love in that way. And you may find people left and right starting to treat you more kindly, come up with surprises, send you cute messages by text on your phone. There may be so many little winks from the universe reflecting back to you. You're allowing yourself to come home because that's what the effect is of living this level of self-love. And it will be easier for you too when you encounter any type of conflict or challenge in your life to look at these things with compassion to see the beauty and the journey in the other beings that are reflecting these ideas back to you of challenge and strife and you can see that they are with their genius free will choosing a path of resistance and they're free to do so and you can love the fact that they are using their free will to paint their version of their reality in this way. They're painting their picture to look like that. They're doing that because they're free. And if you cannot love the picture because it's really simply not what you desire or what you prefer, then you can still love the freedom and the unconditional love that is carrying even that into existence. Because if it wasn't, for unconditional love, it wouldn't exist at all. It wouldn't be there. It wouldn't add to all that is. It wouldn't add one more valid perspective to all that is. So if you find yourself having a hard time understanding what other people are choosing to do, then at least you can choose to love the fact that they're free to do what they think they need to do, even if they think they don't have a free choice. And that loops back to the idea of empowerment. You're sending them an energy frequency of empowerment. I see you doing something very destructive over there. For instance, this might be something you think in an observation of something. But even that somehow must contain some value within all that is, or you wouldn't be doing it. And then, of course, you can think about maybe offering assistance or not, whatever. Calls you in that moment. Follow your alignment. Follow yourself. Don't move from obligation. Move from empathy. See... If you can move in from joy instead of concern and you'll find everything lightening up for yourself and that other person most likely but don't insist on it following your excitement to the best of your ability in every single here and now as far as you can take it without pushing or pulling and with zero insistence as to what the outcome ought to be is the message that our race the yahiel the shahiel the race before us and the sasani and those before them are living by, and it is because we've gained proof of the efficiency of this particular formula in our own realities or versions of realities that we can share it with such confidence, knowing that if you choose to apply this formula in your own life, you will see reflections of it. It said, Arjun, that I, I've read this. You, you can confer and let me know what your observation is. I've read that almost 100% of the Earth population has actually had contact with extraterrestrials, but because the majority of us cannot sustain that on a conscious level, it's just too much for us, we put it away somewhere and it becomes more like a dream we think we had, or maybe we fell asleep and woke up and think something strange happened, different for everybody. Is that true? Have we actually almost all, maybe all had interaction already physically with extraterrestrials? Oh, there's a difference right there. We were just okay. going to jump in and say, okay, that, that would be a differentiation. So a hundred percent, and we mean a full hundred percent of you had contact with extraterrestrials in one way, shape or form. If you wish to look at it from an energetic point of view, because since you are all the results of focus points, you could say, stretching out into the idea of a human experience, you are from the quote-unquote non-physical realm, that already right there makes you having an extraterrestrial origin, not of Earth. You choose Earth to have 
a human experience upon, you see. So you're all already spiritually, intrinsically interwoven with the cosmos. You're much larger than just the idea of your planet. Now, extraterrestrial means of your planet, so of Earth. So in that sense, energetically, yes, you all are, in a sense, star seeds. Even more literally, if you're looking at your DNA, since you are all hybridized into human sapiens and you're containing ET DNA from the area of what your scientists call the missing link, which refers back to the interaction that has been there with the Anunnaki that co-created this space, this race that you understand yourself to be into reality. Now, apart from that, about one third of your human population has had physical contact and hasn't been able, or at least the majority of those, haven't been able to retain a conscious memory of that. And by physical, we mean still a little bit of an overlap between physical interactions on your frequency wavelength in a physical dream point of view, or physical as in having an out-of-body experience, and it's the closest layer to which you could get physical. Within these two levels, there have been physical experiences for about a third, usually connected to the idea of the hybridization program in one way, shape, or form. So that's pretty large amount. Yes, very large. Um, <laughs> And I'll but end you're all, but you're all star seeds. You all contain yeah. stardust. And if you want to be very literal about that, your scientists even know this. You're made of stardust. You are of the cosmos. You all are everything on your planet in that sense is eventually of the cosmos. And so there are many angles that you can choose to look from in tuning deeper into that. But when it comes to the forgetting of these types of interactions, realize that you've chosen to forget that the wiping of the mind was never done to you, that it is something that you allowed or co-created with another species because whatever the memory was, no matter how joyful or perhaps frightening for that version of a person that you, you quote unquote were in the past that you created from now, the forgotten memory would have in one way, shape or form interfered too much with the theme that you're choosing to play out in your humanly focused life. And this is why you choose to forget. It's not because you're dumb or because you're too forgetful or you're not smart enough. It's because you're so incredibly smart. You're such amazing multitaskers mm -hmm. that all of you every night, whilst you dream, travel amongst the stars in different levels of dimensions, in all kinds of realities, living out all types of storylines, quote unquote, over there, and then return to your humanly focused lifetime to live out themes with the information that you've gathered from these multidimensional layers so that you can apply them in your day-to-day -day waking state, as you understand that to be. And even during your waking state, you may get that information from imagination, from creativity, from following your highest excitement, because as you do that, you're in a channeling state. So in that sense, you're always all channeling in one way, shape or form, whether it is channeling your rational mind, thinking it knows it all, or channeling your heart, your higher knowingness in harmony with the rational mind so that you can practically apply the information that you're constantly giving yourself because none of you are here without guidance. And many of you have interdimensional guides at your side in that way. Now, there's another little angle that we may want to look at just for a second. Some people on your planet here and now today have chosen to have a greater portion, let's say, of their non-physical assistance to have a stronger extra dimensional flavor to it, so to speak. There's more ETs in their guide team, if you wish to put it colloquially. And some people have more of a connection energetically with the idea of their ancestors on earth, 
their family members and so forth, really strongly feeling that these people are guiding them or wondering if these people are guiding them but not being sure, but feeling that this connection is more accessible to them. In either case, you will give yourself opportunities throughout your humanly focused lifetime to become consciously aware of the fact that you're being guided. These invitations are constantly sent to you. You may either run into this type of a recording and hear this information and suddenly get goosebumps. You may read a book, you may hear somebody say something to somebody else on the street that sounds like a conversation about mediumship or what have you. And you may frown about it and wonder and that little question mark in that moment may reveal to you that there's an energy waiting to connect with you more. Now it's always up to you. There's no insistence on our side. It's always up to you to connect to that more, but none of you are here without insistence. We always make a little joke about that. None of you in your right mind <laughs> would incarnate on earth without assistance. You all have assistance. You're all, all being guided. You're all unconditionally loved by us and the universe as a whole. Now, can you play with that? Oh, I sure can. That was a whole nother something something. Arjun, thank you so much for being with us, uh, for bringing this level of conversation, yum. Uh, just for being such a gorgeous creature, caring creature. And I, uh, I just leave with that. And I hope everybody could really feel the potency of that. And that just completely took away any, any vestige of separation that might have still been there, certainly for me, which is, wow, they could be my guides. They could be with me right now. They could be so excited that I've opened the door to this in the way that I have because this feels so much like the conversation that I really want to have. So thank you for that amazing insight um, and a, a place for all of us to continue to explore our connection with those who may also be our guides who are not from this planet. And we thank you for the invitation of this interaction and for creating the platform as you do with the assistance that we know you've got. We send you our unconditional love and wish you all a wonderful, brilliant, and very magical, positively synchronous rest of your day. Namaste. Mm, namaste. And we're going to just give Vitika some time to drink, come back, and uh, be present again. That was really... Uh, like honestly way beyond I always I expected a lot because I, I already knew how amazing an experience this was that was beyond and uh, that <laughs> is a show I'm going to watch at least a couple of times and listen to a couple of times wow um, and thank, thank you, you. Uh, for your willingness to allow all of that to come through you for us how do you feel right now little drowsy, little stoned, I always say, because, you know, um, but um, I'm already, you know, sinking back into this uh, here and now with my uh, focus. Mm. And it's been my pleasure, my joy. It is my highest excitement to, to provide these type of um, translations for, um, yeah, people who are willing to hear uh, such as yourself. So I'm really grateful for this opportunity. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're so welcome. And I, I can't let you go without putting you on the spot and asking you, and I hope it's okay to, because I think this is a something that hasn't yet gone out into the world, but I know from my interactions with you that you have a new book that you're putting together. Um, is ah. it okay to talk about the book? Because it's beautiful. I've seen it. It's got your artwork. It's got your poetry. It's got your wisdom. I mean, it's delicious. Can you share a little bit about it? Maybe what state all of that is in? Oh my, um, yeah, uh, I wrote it in 2013 already. It was before I came out with this channeling work. Um, uh, so like maybe I've told you this before in our previous conversation, I'm not sure. Uh, I did art school. I used to be an illustrator uh, like full time. That was my job. Um, and um, I wrote poetry. That was my way of, in a sense, channeling the information that I intuitively already got. 
um, and that resulted in a bundle of poems that are illustrated uh, about um, yeah, I would say love in general. <laughs> so uh, I called it Love Letters from Your Heart. Uh, it's still very much in process, so you definitely are putting me on the spot. I'm still picking out all the typos and everything, uh, but it's my uh, deep desire to have this as a downloadable PDF um, available on my web show um, at some point in the near future so that people can download it and um, enjoy it for themselves. Um, if it will appear in print as well is still something I need to look deeper into because um, it that is a whole other story. <laughs> I've started to look into that. Story. It's a lot of work as well. So uh, first of all, I, I'm uh, picking the, the route of least resistance <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I'm already uh, very happy to see this thing um, out there in the world as a PDF and then people can um, you know, enjoy the images and the and the texts on their tablet or phone, which is already great fun. So um, yeah, it's it's gonna be there. And if people want to be um, uh, informed about this, they can maybe subscribe to my newsletter, which you can do on the contact page at the bottom of the contact page on my website, uh, designforawareness.com. The four is the number four, like uh, Debbie already wonderfully said at the beginning of this interview. And um, then I'll announce the uh, release of this uh, particular book for sure um, for anybody who wants to be on the front row, you know, of this of this development. <laughs> but thank you for bringing it up. And yeah, I did start to venture into that direction, and it is still my desire to write a quote unquote actual book, uh, which is more text and less images about my channeling work with Arjun. That's something mm -hmm. I'm really um, excited about. This is great. Yeah. I'm so glad. I'm so grateful for all your willingness to step into these new levels of visibility and mm -hmm. um, that there'll be, I just already know for you, there'll be so many wins in all of this. And I'm excited for those of <laughs> us who get to receive this information in different ways from you. And so again, her website is design number four awareness.com. I adore you to the moon and back. I am so grateful to know you and be connected with you and have you yet again on the show. And you know, the invitation for me exists always. Oh, thank you, Debbie. It's been such a joy again to connect with you in this way. Um, always a little party and uh, I love you so much. And thank you so much for what you do. Keep on shining. It's really amazing what you do. Your gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Hmm. And I end today's show with this quote which is from Olyanya, Divine Healing. We are merging and crossing timelines. Different lifetimes and realities are coming into ours. Choose what you wish to keep, merge with it in your current reality, and let go of what doesn't serve you for your highest good. You have the power to choose what you want in this life. Merge with your higher dimensional selves, Many of you will start to remember more of your past lives and remember gifts and talents you possessed in those timelines. Many star seeds will remember and connect to their galactic characteristics strongly now. Welcome and embrace the new, you are a creator. Amen, sister. And subscribe uh -oh. to this, that's right, aho. Beautiful, exactly where we are right now. Mm -hmm. Subscribe to the show, youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. Thank you for the messages you leave. I read them all. I try to respond. My guest next week is Sam Leibowitz, radio personality, shaman facilitator, known as the conscious consultant and author of the best-selling book, Everyday Awakening. We'll be talking about healing wounds and leading an authentic life. Let people know about this show and send this forward to someone you know will enjoy it. Thank you so much for joining me today on Dare to Dream. Don't just dare to dream, remember, turn all your dreams into your reality. <laughs>